In this video, we're going to talk about this pen, the Pilot Custom 823 from an artist's perspective. This pen is very well known and highly regarded in the fountain pen community, but how good is it for drawing? That's what we're here to discuss. First, full disclosure, I bought this pen for a silly reason. The idea was to take the wonderful Falcon nib from the Pilot Custom 743 FA and put it into the 823, creating the holy grail pen of my dreams, the 823 with a Falcon nib. The idea of having a demonstrator pen with a vacuum filling system and huge ink capacity and a flexible gold nib was just too enticing, fulfilling every scratch that needed to be itched in a pen. The plan was to use the nib from the 823 in my 743 exclusively for writing, my thought being that since the nib is not flexible, I would be less inclined to draw with it and get distracted. Anyway, it seemed like a good idea at the time, and I could always sell the 743 off on eBay, the resale price on Falcons being pretty good. When I got the 823, I didn't make the nib switch right away because I kind of wanted to know what all the fuss was about. I filled it with ink and started writing. But not for long, because the fact is, there's a reason why I usually use a computer to write. Call it ADD, or just an overwhelming artistic drive, but it's almost impossible for me to hold a pen in my hand for longer than 5 minutes and not draw with it. And when I started doodling in the margins, I realized that this pen, besides being a terrific writer, is also pretty great for drawing. The A23 has been reviewed many, many times on YouTube, so I won't go into ergonomics, which are great, and the filling system, which is wonderful. I do want to mention one thing that will be of interest to artists. This is a larger, substantial filling pen that still manages to be thin enough and comfortable to hold. Many big pens, like this broken Mont Blanc 149 that I got as a gift, for example, uh, get uncomfortably thick. What's more important is that the pen is fairly uniform in thickness all the way through, with the section tapering only a little bit towards the nib, and the pen body becoming only a little bit wider towards the end. That's important to me because I tend to shift my grip a lot when I draw, sometimes sneaking my fingers up when I'm doing detail, or sliding my fingers way towards the middle of the pen when I need to increase the length of my hatching. That's not the case with the other really well-known vacuum filler, this Twisby VAC 700, which has sharp threads towards the end of the section, and then this really uncomfortable lump. But enough about the pen body, let's look at the star of the show, the nib. Even though it's labeled fine, it could put down a very, very thin, extra, extra fine line with a light touch, and then it responds to increases in pressure, going from extra, extra fine to fine. In effect, even though this is a relatively stiff nib, the shift from extra extra fine to fine is a form of line variation, which I think is really cool. Furthermore, usually pens this fine are quite scratchy, such as this Pelican 400 NN that does put down a similar line width, has a little more line variation than the A23, but, and hopefully the microphone picks this up, is a lot scratchier, particularly on the upstroke than the A23. So somehow, despite the fineness, the A23 manages to be buttery smooth gliding across the paper as if it's not even making contact. Okay, so let's take this pen out for a test drive and show you how it draws. As to be expected, this pen is very easy to sketch lightly with, something I really enjoy in a pen. I do sometimes start without sketching things in, but I don't think that's good practice. Drawing spontaneously is fun, and sometimes produces expressive results, but it's only effective when the subject is relatively simple and where the overall layout is not a priority. Knowing how to sketch and plan out your work before committing to the drawing is good training, and helps you deal with complicated and ambitious subject matter. This pen is currently inked with Pilot Iroshizuku Gray. I like to use gray instead of black because it allows me to build up the values more gradually. Also, it matches the transparent gray body of the pen, which is oddly satisfying. Noodler's Lexington Gray is my usual go-to ink, but since it's waterproof, I don't want to risk clogging up an expensive pen. This Pilot ink works great, has a lovely transparency to it, and to my mind, is prettier than Lexington Gray, being a touch lighter and more purple. Drawing with ink in this pen reminded me of Silver Point, which is a very old technique where you draw light, thin lines with a silver stylus. In that technique, you have to carefully build up your values with layers and layers of fine hatching until they visually fuse together, creating soft atmospheric effects similar to charcoal drawing. With Silver Point in mind, I decided to use a hatching technique where I build up many layers of multi-directional hatching to create the illusion of form. I'm working from my elbow here, planting it on the table, and using it as a point of rotation to create very long, even strokes. The advantage of this manner of hatching is that it allows you to create straight, even hatching fairly easily. 
The disadvantage is that it's difficult to change angles. That can be easily overcome, however, by simply rotating the paper. With this approach, I try to do most of the drawing with the elbow hatching method, and then toward the end of the drawing, start hatching using my wrists and fingers going in the opposite direction, mostly to build up contrast and add detail. If you want a more in-depth explanation of my hatching methods, you can take a look at the hatching tutorial, which I'll link to below in the description. While I have your hopefully undivided attention, let's talk about nib smoothness, because it's actually a big factor in drawing. One of the things many artists either fail to recognize or simply underappreciate is that the materials you use affect your work. In the case of a pen, the balance, the weight, and the width of the section will affect the way you grip the pen, changing the way you draw. The wetness, flexibility, responsiveness of the nib will change the amount of pressure you put down, also changing the way you draw. The same goes for smoothness. Since I'm encountering very little resistance with this nib, it actually makes me want to work faster. I'm not as hesitant to move the nib in every direction and make very fast strokes. Now, this is not to say that pens that are not as smooth are worse for drawing. Since I started drawing with dip pens, I actually enjoy working with nibs that lack tipping and are quite scratchy. I have pens with nibs ranging from scratchy to super smooth, and all of them bring out different aspects in my work. That's really the reason why I have so many pens. Every pen I own pushes me in a different direction, sometimes yielding surprising, interesting results. So, to conclude, I think this pen is an awesome, interesting drawing tool, but I could be guilty of price bias, the tendency to think that more expensive things are better. Or it could just be that I feel guilty for the shameless display of conspicuous consumption and want to justify the purchase. I think time will tell. So far, I find myself drawing with this pen quite a lot, but I could get bored of it and decide to sell it off. Now, would I recommend the Pilot A23 for someone looking for a pen to draw with? Well, it does have quite a few things going for it. The vacuum filling system is great, it holds a lot of ink, and allows you to take the pen on an airplane. The ergonomics of the pen are great, with just the right balance, both posted and unposted. And of course, the nib is fantastic, capable of very delicate lines, and despite being stiff, is still very responsive to slight shifts in pressure. But the price of the pen, I think, cannot really be justified if the plan is only to use the pen for drawing, considering that for almost $150 less, you can get the excellent Pilot Custom 74 SF, which performs very similarly to the A23, but with more line variation. I think this pen is probably best left for those that are looking for a workhorse pen for writing, but who also enjoy doodling on the margins. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Pilot A23 from an artist's perspective. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have comments or questions, leave them below, and I'll be happy to respond.